All right, let's move on to winning time. Uh, the HBO original series. You can watch it on Max Streaming. Um, unfortunately for the show, I it is it is one of the debuts during the writer's strike, so there's been very little. You know, like I I, I can I, you have a big question, I, and I think it's kind of related to to the question I'm gonna ask Brendan. I I just adore what Quintia Zay is doing playing Magic Johnson. This guy is so damn charismatic. He. I, I am really curious to see like where his career goes because I could you could see this being something where it's like he just kind of becomes magic, but it, I think I there's just like I a was rain. having the same worry. And so I don't I, was, I, I, I don't want I don't want the... I couldn't remember his name. I knew Quincy, but I couldn't oh, remember his no. last name. And I was trying to type it out on the the outline, so I just went to search it. And I was like, what is he? What else does he have going on? And I was like, uh, not a lot. I really hope this doesn't happen to him because he's super talented. It's not just that he can play magic well. He he just charismatic and he has a swagger to him and he has like a charm and yes, all those things are magic, but this dude's awesome. He is putting a, like this show, like I, the, the scenes with him and, and Adrian Brody playing Pat Riley are just like Patrick. catnip. For, these are catnip for me. Like my Holy grail of NBA, of NBA things that I would like to watch behind closed doors is practice. And coaches actually talking to players in a more frank way. We never get to see it. We never will. Mm -hmm. One of the big things I'm jealous of NFL reporters of is that they get to go watch practice in the summer for like a month. Yeah. We don't get to do that. I that bums me out. Getting but like so getting even a fictionalized version of seeing Quincy Isaiah as Magic Johnson talking to Pat Riley Adrian Brody, yeah. is just it, it's just like that I, ice bath I, scene is just It's so good. It was when, perfect. When, yeah. Yeah, it's just it's great, and I I think Quincy is at the center of the show with the injury stuff this season. You know, with the the plot, uh, the the when he they ends the one episode and he looks at the camera when they break the the the, the wall kind of thing, and he's like, I hate me. He's like, I he just says he hates Larry Bird. I fucking hate that guy. Like this guy has just embodied this thing at the center of this story in a way that the show doesn't work without him at all like this is this is like a truly like to me like incredible performance from quincy isaiah doing playing one this, of the most, this like, guy and, I, and magic Ma of course and who now like who now just like uh is just like sending tweets that absolutely will never acknowledge that the show existed yeah and kareem like wrote an essay about how much he hated it which is like the same thing as you know him cursing everybody out um so let's just talk about this quote that i pulled which is from uh, israel Daramola at, at Defector, and he's been doing, I think he wrote about the show for them last year, and then he's a staff writer there now and did a big write-up on the whole season. Uh, he's seen all of it, I guess, so maybe things are going to change. But he wrote that it's hard to like Magic as a character this season if you have no prior relationship to the actual player. And I don't agree with that at all. I think he's does some detestable things and treats people not always great. But, like, the scene in this most recent episode, episode three, where uh, Jerry Buss invites him and Norm Nixon to have lunch with him. Magic is acting like a complete asshole in that, episode, in that scene. And he, like, pulls the food out of Norm Nixon's, off of his fork. And he's just, like, pacing the, the room during them having the conversation. Like, I'm, not, I'm just kind of here for show. Like, we all know how this is going to end up, you know. Like, he's being a dick, but... I still just loved, loved it. Like I'm still so drawn to it. So I don't really agree with that, that magic is sort of unlikable and kind of creates a negative energy in this season. What do you think? I think, I think the way that he is carrying himself in like every walk of life from the, the, the Norm Nixon thing, how he talks to cookie yeah, that that's rough. There, that that is hard to get behind. I don't, I don't throw my support there. That I'll carve out an exception for those portions. The way that he treats Cookie is is rough, especially because that's his current wife. <laughs> yeah. Um, when she's like visualizing him, and it's not him, so it's not exactly him. But when they have him being like guy, like some guys like to drink, some guys like to to do drugs i like to fuck and it's like okay it's like oh okay like we're we're just gonna like this it's just like okay we get it it's not subtle we're getting no, time for for oh it's not subtle i th i think this is remind i think 
this is this to me brings up the Adam McKay question of this all because I think part of what Adam McKay when he works, I think he works because like he understands and leans into the fact that like the people that we are going to see in movies, see on screen, talk about forever, the athletes that we grew up watching, that he is a pro. I think around the like growing up probably watching the Lakers and the Celtics and stuff. Mm-hmm. These people are not perfect. They are flawed like the rest of us and I think he understands it and wants to hammer it over your head I think that's where this magic stuff comes in but it's also like I kind of understand that like I th- I think if you're Magic Johnson I kind of understand how you end up like this sure but you know? I, yeah I, I think so and I think the ethos too of the show though is kind of like none of this happens if they're not so flawed none of this happens if there's not all this baggage and messiness and whatever and I feel like if you really zoom out in the basketball of it it's like this league doesn't get as popular as it is unless we feel that, you know, and yes, the, the celebrity nature of it, like, isn't possible unless we know the, the drama, unless we feel that actual connection to these guys. And, um, yeah, I, I think Adam well, the, does the, a good the, job. I, I like the way that it's shot. I like the way that it kind of like shows you that it's history, but also shows you that it's, exaggerated history and then there's like a glitz to it kind of all at once i think it's a little extra in a lot of moments but if you kind of just let it hit you i think it 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 doesn't take me out of it it doesn't feel like a problem but it is it is excessive still if that makes sense well i i think about the the scene that maybe encapsulates what i think you're hitting at if there's the scene where magic's going to come back from his injury and the guy who works in the front office, we saw him in season one, I think, shows him the T-shirt. Yeah. And and he knows that in that moment, his after he sees how the guys are talking about him in the locker room and how he's kind of not being received well, he's like, get this the fuck out of here. I can't mm-hmm. have this, right? Then they, they cut. The cut of the shot is the shirt maybe going away, but then it's, it's a woman in the crowd with the shirt on. It's this whole arena in that yeah. shirt. And the what does he do when he comes out of the tunnel? By the way. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, the way they shoot the form is very similar to how they shoot the the, the form club. And yeah. that, that is very intentional. That that is that's intentional. There's there's a language they're trying to convey there. Um but it the, when when he comes out of the tunnel and he's smiling and he's like it tells you what you need to know. It's like okay, he gets it. Like he he understands what this is in a way that maybe no one else really does. Yeah. So one of the things that I feel like well, I have a few other questions before we get like too too deep because I have like a, a thematic thing that I want to get to. But okay, um, basketball wise, I don't think I've ever seen a show or a movie that shoots basketball better than this. No, it's no. There's nothing close because it 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 without shooting like elongated basketball scenes and like elongated gameplay. It like aside from like some scuff and scrimmages that's like a couple minutes long, like that's about as long as they shoot it because they know there's like a limit. They shoot it like the camera is like a step behind someone running uh, down the court. Mm-hmm. Like Did it you shoots see the it in a way from when season one was out of how they. Do yes, it? yeah, yes. It's it's amazing and it's this works because this. I think you needed to shoot the like. There are so many things about this show that don't exist if this exact style and team is doing it because the show part of the reason the game becomes popular and it explodes is because of the way they're playing you could only convey that i think if you shot it this way it's it feels like to me yeah it's it's the it's the same thing that they're trying to convey with the lighting and the kind of staticky shoot and everything that's showtime off the court Showtime on the court has to come through too, and that that has its own obviously kind of art to it too. But I think the only other ones that come close are like one on one, or like you know, park street ball stuff. But in terms of like competitive basketball, I was, I'm not even sure there's anything close. Like what what else would you even point to? You know, I, I was gonna say I, I I was gonna say the white men can't jump remake. So when they got Jack Harlow's shooting hand wrong from beginning to end of film. Uh, yes. No. So yeah, I th- that that off the top, very good. Uh, Larry Bird, I think the actor that's playing him isn't as athletic as the others. I don't know if you've noticed, but the cuts are a little more dramatic yeah. with him. 
They don't ever actually show him doing anything. They show him making a move, and then it's always a cut to the back of his head in some kind of way. Yes. Whereas the Korean they got a Magic double. guys can play basketball, I think. A um, little rough. Speaking of, real yeah, quick. Quint, yeah, uh, Quincy Isaiah, and I think the other guy's name, I think he's like a doctor of acting. Yeah, Solomon Hughes. Mm-hmm. He is a... Uh, yeah, he's six. He's six eleven in real life, which which helps. They got very lucky. And there. he, they got very lucky. And he is, um, he has a he has a PhD in acting from the University of Georgia, I believe. Very impressive. Uh, what do you, what would you have thought of Bo Burnham in the Larry Bird role, by the way? Because that was the original casting. <laughs> Um, I would just be wondering where Phoebe Bridgers was because I'm a sick person, Brendan. Yeah, I I don't think it would have worked. I'm glad that they pivoted. No, I don't even but, know Bo, the actor who's playing Larry Bird, but I think that's better. No, but I Bo, Bo Burnham really would have took me out of it. I honestly, here's a, I love Bo Burnham. I I quite enjoy like his special that he did. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he was one of those like uh, I'm of the age where like I saw him doing YouTube videos and stuff sure. when I was like 12. You were like six. Um, also a Bo Burnham fan, but came, came yeah, to yes. it slightly later than that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He, uh, <laughs> and I'm just picturing Bo Burnham like walking in and telling his daddy dropped out. Or I actually can't picture Bo Burnham drinking like a can of Budweiser. No. It's just all, <laughs> everything about it is, is the wrong vibe, except for the fact that he's a tall blonde man. Everything else is a no. Yeah. Yeah, because he doesn't have, like, I, I'm just, I really just, like, and now I just, I really can't picture him, like, playing, like, basketball with, like, guys, like, on, like, in, like, a dock area or something. Like, I, whatever that it just would have been weird. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Can uh, imagine him doing other, a, 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 the accent work, too? Is the, is the, like, like true. now. You yep. gotta have it. Okay. I, need, I hope I can find the screen test for this, actually. I hope someone puts it out there the internet at some point. I would like to watch the screen test for him doing Larry Bird. Speaking of Bird and the doc and the whatever area of town and Red Auerbach coming to his house and that whole storyline from season three, the, the biggest talking point about this show is the exaggerated history. And there's like 10 websites doing what really happened in this episode of Winning Time articles every week when these episodes come out. I don't mind it whatsoever. I feel like the Riley Magic like ice bath scene that we were talking about, to me, that's a perfect example of how it can work, where it's like, we don't really know, but you can like create an affectation to evoke what probably those conversations were like. Um, but I think the one area that it struggles, th- that, it, that it doesn't hold up to me, is when it gets like very interpersonal and like very character driven about stuff that we really don't even know anything about. Like for instance, Jerry Buss with his girlfriend in this most recent episode or like the stuff with Kareem and his wife. There's just some where mm-hmm. it gets, it gets a little rough and I don't love it. But like when things are just ratcheted up to, 12 for no reason i think that makes it better i I don't have an issue with it at all if anyone's dumb enough to think this is a a, like a docuseries then that's on them yeah they haven't consumed adam mckay before they haven't watched his uh what is it the the dick cheney movie that he did vice yeah and the big short yeah yeah they they didn't uh his last movie like what what's the that kareem actually i remember yeah movie's bad don't watch it very bad very bad movie with a really good cast, but like this is what Adam McKay does. Like even he he did. I don't know if you've listened to it, Brendan, but he did. He has a a podcast that's not like the Death on the series. The first season was Death on the Wing. That was about cocaine. Like he clearly has a fascination with this because it was about cocaine in the eighties. The second one is about is about it's called Death on the Lot. It's about like deaths in Hollywood. Um, would highly recommend that. That's I thought that was like the best thing he's done in a long time. If I'm being honest. I, I the, the Adam McKay like exists to just sort of I think turn things up in that way, and it's like even some of the locker room interactions, it's just like those feel turned. Even the the Pat Riley Paul Westhead like Pat Riley betraying him and Jason Segel like then the next season like I brought in the oh my other like it, even that feels turned up in like a very like it's like part Shakespeare part like we yeah. needed to fill some tension here. That's like it it, it there's. There's something in that that felt very like keyed up in a way. It's also that just is, so hard. That is interesting. I think that's why it doesn't bother me. Is it's like we're not yeah. doing this about like you know our founding fathers. <laughs> like it's 
it's Magic Johnson. Like, as long as you're not going to get a libel lawsuit for HBO, I, it's just, it's sports. Like, you know. I also, I, I, I will say, if Pat, you know, the scene where uh, Paul West said Jason Segel comes to the pool and, like, is dressing nice and Pat Riley still isn't dressing nice, there's just no way Pat Riley wasn't pulling off fits his whole life. That man has fashion just in his bones. You can't convince me otherwise. Oh, yeah. No, that's that's not a question. There's not no way. Fact. There's no way this man was ever dressed in sh- ever dressed in schleppy. That that that's my critique with history. So you have some Celtic stuff that we definitely can uh, get to, but so, I have one, yeah. one more question. Which yeah. character comes away looking the worst? Um. So far, is it not Matt? Is it not Jerry? It's Jerry Busser magic. I think. I kind of think it's Paul Westhead. Yeah, I I think if Jason I'm thinking Siegel's including playing him like such like a like a baby a dipshit like yeah, he's just playing like him a, like, like he's a child yeah baby you know yeah I I think I think if you incorporate season one I think it it is magic or Jerry Bus just because like the the behavior towards women is just like it's 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 I mean you know I I'm not the answer is actually I think it's the the Bus brothers. <laughs> which like real life has made them look pretty bad as well but yeah yeah but it's it's really like for for foreshadowing that genie's just gonna fucking shit on them forever that like they're they have they have no sway in the organization yeah yeah i don't think they like how this show portrays them i actually feel like genie like- probably would love this show she looks great she's like the one hero yeah. of the whole show <laughs> Her and uh, the the office man, the it's well, it's like the women in the. It's like Molly Gordon, whose character's name I can't remember, uh-huh. is like is like kind of like a additive in like her little thing, and then and uh, the the V and Gabby Hoffman. Those are yeah. the three that kind of come across like and Cookie, honestly, for the most part, like comes across okay. Like Magic's parents, I think, are winners. They're great. The actors yeah. are great. Yeah, they, they tend to try to keep. Shout it out Rob course. Morgan, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Paul Westhead's a really inspired answer on your part. Um, Phoenix Mercury WNBA champion Paul Westhead, by the way, but in this show, not the uh, the uh, lo- low key dark horse answer is it Norm Nixon? Norm Nixon has that moment in the first season though, where he he gets to own magic on the playground, which is a thing that absolutely did never happen in a million <laughs> years. But congrats! I mean, to them you mean there wasn't there wasn't a, there wasn't a game of blowing him on on a on a playground at a white party hosted by, at a hosted by a former disgraced Clippers owner Donald Sterling? Yeah, I don't think so. That I that demands a whole like a whole episode of that's a case. But he he comes across like. Here's where I think the basketball stuff like fails a little bit. I don't think they actually properly like. I don't know how you would do this in a way that's like interesting to a viewer, yeah. but I don't think they quite uh, explain the ball handling friction between Norm Nixon and Magic in a way that is like actually like helpful. They just expect yeah. you to understand that Magic is Magic Johnson. That Norm Nixon needs to shut the fuck up and get out of the way. Yeah, agreed. I actually think that they don't do a good enough job of like showing how incredible Magic is. No, they talk not about it, it a it, lot, but they don't yeah. have a way of being like, I like, obviously he has the baby hook in the last season that everybody knows, but they don't. Yeah. That, that's definitely is true. It, is it's there, almost like a, does co- he have, it's like a stylistic coaching thing is the way that they end up kind of showing you that rather than just the being system. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Rather than being yeah. like magic is doing this thing that no one else in basketball has ever done. And he's so talented just, in, just, this, in this way. Does he have a scene that showcases how good he was at basketball in this period of time that's as cool as Larry Bird actually showing up in jeans and dropping like 40 points at, at Indiana State after no, drinking exactly. two Bud Lights? And having like, it, you know, anytime they show Bird, it's like he's shit talking and whatever. Like you get the Larry Bird thing very quickly. Whereas Magic, it's like, it seems like all he ever does is make the coaches and Kareem mad. <laughs> like that's all that his basketball and- results in. Yeah. Um, um. Yeah. That's the. Yeah. That's a good so, way of putting it. 